Well, welcome to this video lecture in which I discuss how thick and thin identities are constructed. In the previous lecture, I discussed that spatial identities are discourses. They are discourses about who we are. They are not fixed facts, but they are social constructions based on the selection of similarities and differences across space. For instance, a region bases its spatial identity discourse uh, on the selection of specific elements. Uh, it focused on specific landscapes, for instance. But the spatial identity discourse also incorporates a vision on its neighbors, how it relates to them, if it associates with them or if it sees them as enemies. But also across scales, it has a view on its relation with bigger entities. Like, for instance, a region has incorporated its regional identity discourse a vision of the nation to which it belongs. I used this picture in a previous lecture to further um, elucidate these relations. But spatial identity discourses also incorporate an interpretation about change. They have a vision of time. They have a vision of the past, if, if it is good or bad, has to be protected or changed, or, and, and also incorporates a vision of the future. And these, all these uh, aspects give guidance of what is allowed or what corresponds with that identity. They have, uh, identity discourses have a strong normative dimension about what is allowed in that space, what is allowed in that region, and how it should develop or how it should be uh, kept as it is. So spatial identity discourses can be very different. There are many different types of identity discourses. For instance, sometimes identity discourses are used to block change. They focus on what we are and what we wish to remain, what we wish to conserve. For instance, th this picture so shows inhabitants of a village in the green belt around London who object against the plans of the government to increase urban housing in that area. And they really express their identity. They stand here on a, on a green patch, uh, clearly in a village, and they are dressed like villagers and they want to protect their established way of life against this perceived incursion. But identities can also be used as a motor for change. For instance, this picture of the Scottish exhibition or conference center in Glasgow uh, incorporates that vision of a better, modern, outward-looking uh, Scotland linked to a renew restructuring of, uh, of Glasgow. Let's try to illustrate this different use of identity discourses by some examples. Um, I focus on two German examples. These are closely linked. They are both located here. here. You have Germany, here you have the land of Northern Westphalia, here you have the Ruhr area, and the two regions I want to discuss are Lippe, this is this dark red area here on the right, and Ostwestfalen Lippe, which is the larger region around it, but which also incorporates Lippe. Both of these regions have a clear identity discourse which distinguishes very strongly from the Ruhr area. They want to stress that they are different from that old industrial region. One way of being different from the rural area is to stress that one is an historical region. The region of Lippe stresses its strong historical roots. It used to be an independent state since the Middle Ages, but today, today is still an administrative unity. Uh, but also it has very strong civic organization. It has a Heimatbund with many members, but also a Landesverband Lippe with much money. And these together stimulate the, the preservation of old traditions, the celebration of old traditions, and the conservation, for instance, of this marketplace in Lemgo. But also the regional identity is linked and has been linked in different ways to the national identity. For instance, this statue of Hermann, or Amenius, celebrates uh, Lippe as the area, the true German region, where the uh, Roman legions were defeated. Another way to construct a regional identity discourse 
as being distinct of the old rural area is to promote oneself as a very modern region that is done in Ostwestfale Lippe, the larger region uh, around Lippe, which also includes Lippe, but also includes other more urban areas. Here it presents itself as being part of NRW, Northern Westphalia, but uh, in a specific corner. And it's very much focused on technology, innovation, and it presents itself to the outside world. Huh? It boasts that it's already part of Industry 4.1 and it's uh, the, the, the location of cutting edge research, so m very much a more forward-looking identity discourse. So these are two great examples of regional identity discourses which focus on being very different from the rural area, but they do it along very different lines. Lippe focuses on its, on its rustic character, focuses on traditional aspects, focuses on its landscape, like incorporated in this picture. While Ostwestfalen Liebe focuses on different elements, it focuses on a very dynamic industry that is seen as very innovative and focuses on its urban network. These differences between these two regional identity discourses are clearly present in these two YouTube videos. Please have a look at them. These differences between these two regional identity discourses are also further discussed in one of my publications. Well, one can give many other examples of this kind of different usage of regional identity discourses. But how can one conceptualize these differences? Let's take a closer look at some useful conceptualizations. First of all, there's a differentiation between spaces of regionalism and regional spaces made by Martin Jones and Gordon McLeod. This is the difference between the regionalism which is more or less based on a traditional vision of uh, regional uh, identity and is very much a political project supported by a large section of the population. While on the other hand, we have regional spaces, perhaps like Ostwestfalen Lippe, which is much more a project of administration and which, which focuses much more on regional competitiveness. Then there's the differentiation between the Guardian and the Commercial Syndrome, as developed by Peter Taylor. The Guardian Syndrome, that's more a territorial perspective of uh, control, while the Commercial Syndrome is more or less an urban perspective on relations, which focuses much more on exchanges and market relations. Another useful distinction is that between thick and thin institutions, uh, which is made by uh, Anton Seidefeld, where thick institutions are more or less the old, traditional, pre-modern, stable traditional institutions, while the thin institutions are the new ways in which in the postmodern world, based on choice, uh, new forms of organizations are made, which are much more flexible and much less resistant to, much, much less resistant to change. Another big and useful co uh, conceptualization is the differentiation between uh, bonding and bridging relations made by Granovetter, where bonding relations are a focus on uh, the relations within a group, while bridging relations are focused more on the relation between groups. And there's of course the, the great distinction between solid modernity and liquid modernity made by Sigmund Baumann, where solid modernity is like think institutions. It's much more based on, uh, on a stable situation, while the current phase of liquid modernity focuses much more on the, 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 the fragile and fluid situation which people have to deal with. And there, are, of course, are many, many, many more of these kinds of distinctions. So there are many different but relatively similar dualities which can be used to conceptualize the differences between the usages of regional identity discourses. These different spatial identity discourses um, are of course also linked to differences in uh, the spaces to which they refer. These can operate at different scales, already discussed, or they can have a more or less an open network or more a closed territorial character. Also, the social bonds which are discussed in these regional identity discourses can be very different. 
it can focus on the whole regional community or it can focus more on specific groups with uh, specific interests. This uh, then results in that spatial identity discourses can focus on many different aspects. And one can argue that some of them are thicker while others are thinner. So let's uh, discuss this, this distinction between thick and thin aspects of spatial identity discourses. First of all, it's important to stress that this difference is an ideal typical contrast. So that you can't find them in real life. Real life is more or less an approximation of, of this differentiation. It's always a combination of the, these types of elements on which spatial identity discourses are, are made. They form more or less a continuum in real life. Well, first of all, the spatial form between the thick and thin is different. Uh, thick identities are much more focused on close territorial entities, while thin identity discourses focus much more on the open character of the spaces to which they refer and are much more of a networked character. Also, the organization to which they refer, how the region is organized, how the space is organized, is very much different in those spatial identity discourses. Thick identity discourses focus much more on the institutionalized character of it, of, of its uh, continuation. And while on the other hand, thin identity discourses focus much more on the project character of it. And where they focus on the participants in thick identity discourses, they focus much more on the wider population, while thin identity discourses focus much more on administrators and specific stakeholders. They are much more selective. And the purpose of the regional identity discourse or the spatial identity discourse in, in general is very much different. Thin identity discourses, let's start now on the right hand side of this uh, table, they focus much more on the single purpose, they focus much more on economic problems and the, solve, the solving of those problems. While on the other hand, thicker identity discourses focus much more on culture and and focus on many other aspects uh, um, which are related to the region or the space to which they refer. The time perspective is also very different. Thick identity discourses are much more defensive, focus much more on history and stress their stable character, while thin identity discourses are much more forward oriented, focus much more on change, on economic development, much more offensive are much more forward-looking. And the skillful focus is also different. Uh, thick identity discourses focus much more on local aspects and traditional national identities to which they are related, while thin identity discourses much more, focus much more on economic competitiveness and link that uh, to, to the global scale. All thick and thin are, in my opinion, useful concept to better understand the different political usages of spatial identity discourses. But is there also an evolution over time from thick to thin? I asked that question in one of my papers. One could argue that, that national identity and nation-state formation are linked and that created a hierarchy uh, between the regional and the national and also linked to the modernization. And modernization was also linked from upscaling from the regional to the national level. But that na national identity discourses were always linked to the idea that the nation consists of a mosaic of regions with many different traditional regional identities. But these were linked to an overarching national identity, which partly protected these different traditional uh, regional identities, but also linked them together and augmented them with more forward-looking elements. So the national identity discourse was not only based on a uh, genus which looked back, but also on the uh, genus face looking forward. So backward and forward-looking elements, thick and thin elements were linked. But now, of course, the role of the nation changed state changes. Globalization is taking place, or at least one can argue that it's taking place, and the relation between different scale levels, the political relations between the, the central, the local, the regional, and the continental scale level, huh? European integration, is, is changing over time, which results in the creation of many new regions, 